Some very small living organisms can at least survive limited exposure in space. Does this actually have any wider implications? Well, tardigrades or their relatives have been around on Earth for about 500 million years, and cyanobacteria have been around on Earth for about 3.5 billion years. And whilst it's highly likely that these forms of life evolved here on this planet, there is a possibility these forms of life, or something very like them, may have arrived from elsewhere. However, these forms of life did come from another location, so it leaves us with three main problems. How did they leave their original location? How did they travel the distance between? And how did they manage to safely enter our atmosphere? Well, it turns out that actually leaving their original location isn't as difficult as it first may appear. If these forms of life did have their origins somewhere other than the Earth's, then it's most likely they developed either on another planet or on a large, stable moon. That location would have had a reasonably strong gravitational field and a significant atmosphere. So how do these organisms manage to escape the atmosphere and the gravitational pull without the need for things like rockets to get them into space? Here, it's down to the key of size and mass. Both tardigrades and cyanobacteria are very small and very light. This means there are lots of phenomena on the planet that can carry these organisms high up into the atmosphere without ha having any rockets or anything to assist them. Anything from severe storms, asteroid strikes and volcanoes can push anything that's that light high up into the upper atmosphere. But exactly how high? Well, the only real data we have is here on Earth. And in 2013, British researchers sent a balloon up into the stratosphere and managed to collect a tiny form of algae called a diatom, at, at around an altitude of around 25 kilometres. It's certainly likely that a volcano or another event could push forms of life even higher than that, but still doesn't get us actually into outer space. Here we have to look at something called the solar wind. Now, Due to Earth's gravity, we only lose a tiny portion of the very, very top of our atmosphere by being blown away by the solar wind. However, like most winds, the amount of charged particles reaching the Earth from the, the Sun varies with solar activity. And a coronal mass ejection passing close to the Earth can increase the strength of the wind by about five times. Solar wind can interact with the upper layers of our atmosphere, including the mesosphere, which starts at around 50 kilometres from the Earth. So it's certainly theoretically possible for a form of life to be blown up into the upper atmosphere that's then caught by a particularly strong solar wind and blown into space. This may be more or less likely on other planetary bodies with life on them, depending on their mass, thickness of their atmosphere, proximity to the sun, and the strength of solar wind. Now we have the possibility of life drifting slowly through space, blown away from the sun, carried on the solar wind. We now have the problem of actually entering another planetary atmosphere. It turns out this actually isn't much of a problem at all. We normally think of things entering the Earth from space. You think about things like um, heating up of spacecraft or meteors. However, this heating up is due to two major factors, mass and speed. The heavier something is and the faster it's travelling, the more it will heat up on entering the atmosphere. Any form of life entering our atmosphere from space is likely to be relatively slow moving and also relatively light. So rather than burning up on entry, as we just slowly drift down to Earth. So in summary, it is possible for life to travel from one planet to another. However, there are some more major issues that we've yet to get into. Surviving the need for extensive periods in space and all the vastness of space finding a suitable planet. I'll try to cover those in the next video.